Chapter 721. Could you give me a shout next time instead of blocking my path? Sophia grumbled. Are you in such a hurry to see me? Arthur asked with a smile as his eyes narrowed. Sophia blushed slightly. Turning her pretty face away, she replied, who said that? I'm not. Have you made a reservation at a restaurant? She nodded. Aha, uh -huh. I've got to get back to work in the afternoon, so let's eat at a nearby restaurant. Right, let's go. Arthur suddenly stretched out his hand and grabbed her wrist before taking her out of the building. Sophia's heart pounded for a moment. Why is this guy taking me by the hand? There are a lot of my colleagues here. I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea about me. In the restaurant, she said to the man across from her on behalf of her father, Mr. Weiss, I'd like to thank you on my dad's behalf for returning the company to him. Seeing the sincere expression on her pretty face, Arthur replied with a smile, is that all you have to say? She pursed her lips. What kind of thanks do you want, then? Seeing how tender and bouncy her rosy lips were as she sank her teeth into them, he somehow felt his body tense up. He gave a gulp, saying, why bite your lips for no reason? Aren't you afraid of biting through your lips? Sophia had a habit of biting her lower lip when she felt uneasy. When she heard Arthur's words, her crescent-shaped eyes curved in a smile. I'm not stupid. Why would I bite my own lips? Arthur chided with a serious expression, don't keep biting your lip in front of a guy from now on. Do you know what kind of cue it is to a man? Understanding what he meant, Sophia instantly blushed. I am not trying to seduce anyone. I only do that out of habit, she explained. Get out of the habit, ordered the man across from her overbearingly. Sophia nodded obediently. Okay, I'll get out of this habit starting from today. Seeing how obedient she looked, Arthur somehow felt incredibly delighted. His lips curved in a smile as he praised her, saying, What a good girl. She instantly went red in the face again. What is this guy taking me for? After the food was served, Sophia talked about her current job. Knowing that she was actually working under Anastasia, he was somewhat reassured. He said, She'll take care of you. Sophia nodded. That's right. President Tillman really takes good care of me. If you come across anything that's hard to deal with in the future, you can ask me for help, Arthur said. However, Sophia shook her head resolutely. Thanks, but it's not necessary. She would sever all contact with him after this. Neil, this was what she had promised Martha. Before they realized it, it was already past 1 p.m. After checking the time, she promptly said, I should get back to work. Already, she went to pay the bill whereas he looked out of the window while losing himself in thought. After they left the restaurant, Sophia waved to him. I'm going back to work. She had wanted to say, see you again, but she thought they would never meet again from now on. Every step she took toward the Presgrave group was resolute, albeit with a hint of reluctance. Arthur followed her with his gaze. She was dressed in a well-fitting suit, and her long hair bounced slightly in the midday sunshine. There were many attractive and charming urban beauties around her, but his eyes were glued to her slim figure. Martha was away when he returned to the villa. As soon as he returned to his study his bodyguard knocked on the door, wanting to come in. Come in, he said. Young Master Weiss, we've issued reward notices along the route on which Miss Goodwin lost the necklace. If there is any news, they'll inform me immediately. Pay attention to the second-hand market as well. Perhaps someone will list it on the market. Young Master Weiss, is Miss Goodwin sure that she lost the necklace? Can we talk to her to learn more information so that it's easier for us to search for the necklace? Don't disturb her. There's no hurry. Having a headache, Arthur sank into the sofa while propping his head with his hand. Yes, Young Master Weiss, the bodyguard replied. As he left the room, he suddenly noticed a figure trotting away. It was none other than Emily. At this moment, she had returned to her room. Pressing her back against the door, she patted her chest somewhat nervously. What did I overhear just now? Chapter 722. The Weiss family's priceless heirloom is lost. And it's Sophia who lost it. Oh, my God. That heirloom is supposed to be worn. Around my neck. To think that Sophia, that B asterisk TCH has lost it. Damn it. I've got to tell old Madam Weiss about this. At the thought of this, she took out her cell phone and dialed Martha's number. Hello, Emily. Is something the matter? Grandma, I've got to tell you a big piece of bad news. 
the family heirloom you gave to Artie is lost, and it's Sophia who lost it. As she had expected, Martha sounded shocked on the other end of the line. What? It's true. I just heard that Artie was anxiously searching for it, but it seems that it couldn't be found anymore. Okay, I'll come back right away. Emily hung up the phone with a flicker of delight in her eyes. Now that the family heirloom was lost, Sophia would be in big trouble. Martha arrived home just half an hour later. She said to a bodyguard standing guard at the entrance, come in after me. The bodyguard followed her into the living room before entering the small garden outside the drawing room. Let me ask you this did Artie lose his necklace? The bodyguard's face froze. He immediately buttoned his lip. Arthur had told them not to go around telling anyone about this. What's the matter? Not even I can get you to talk, huh? Martha asked in a commanding voice. As the necklace lost, out with it. Enwise the bodyguard dared not defy her. Yes, it is, old Madame Weiss. A. Who lost it? The bodyguard hesitated to answer. It's. Martha looked as black as thunder. Is it lost at the hands of Sophia? The bodyguard was stunned for a few seconds. You know all about it. Martha was inwardly exasperated. Not only had her grandson given their family heirloom to a young lady without her permission, but the young lady even lost it. Arthur was adjusting his cuffs while coming downstairs when he saw the bodyguard coming over in a hurry from the garden. Upon seeing him, the bodyguard immediately came over and apologized to him in fear. Young Master Weiss, I I'm sorry. Before Arthur could realize what had happened, a stern and commanding female voice sounded. Come over here, Artie. Hearing Martha's voice, Arthur immediately sensed that something was wrong. After darting a look at the bodyguard who left in a hurry, he went to the garden. Martha's eyes were blazing with fury as she sat on the sofa in the garden's glass house while watching Arthur coming in. Not only that, but she had a serious expression that he had rarely seen on her face. Grandma. Arthur sat down across from her while waiting for her to question him. Where is the family heirloom your mom gave you? Where is it now? Martha asked straightforwardly. Arthur instantly realized what this was about. But how did Grandma learn about the loss of the family heirloom? Grandma, you know all about it. Not knowing how much Martha knew about it, he had no choice but to sound her out first. Why did you privately give our family heirloom to a young lady without consulting us first? Not only that, but you even let her lose it carelessly. Martha questioned angrily. Arthur's pupils dilated in shock. Did the bodyguard betray me and tell her about Sophia? He could only take the blame by lying. First, saying, Grandma, I'm the one who lost it, not her. Martha was dumbfounded. Artie's trying to protect that girl. Why, have I underestimated his feelings for her? This immediately put her on the alert. Artie, let me say this first. You've got to recover our family heirloom and stay away from that Miss Goodwin. She said while looking at Arthur. Just then, Emily's figure showed up nearby in the garden. Shifting her gaze toward her, Martha added, in what way is Emily? Incomparable with that Miss Goodwin. She grew up near our place and is a better match for you than Sophia Goodwin in terms of family background. Grandma, I can do whatever you say, but I can't obey you when it comes to my choice of lover. Sorry about that, Arthur retorted, in a deep voice. Chapter 723. I don't mean to impose myself on you, but you've got to think about our family. And besides, is it really good for someone as naive as Miss Goodwin to live in our family? Martha argued calmly. Our family has a complicated background and an extensive network of influence. If you let a lady who knows nothing be the lady of the house, she'll panic. You're overthinking it, Grandma. She and I have yet to reach that point in our relationship, Arthur said, comforting her. I've got something else to deal with, so I gotta go. After leaving through the door, Arthur crooked his finger at the bodyguard from earlier, who immediately came over with his head down, saying, young Master Weiss. Arthur's good-looking face clouded over instantly. Who allowed you to betray me? I'm sorry, young Master Weiss, but I didn't betray you. I saw someone when I came out of your study. Who is it? Miss Jennings has eavesdropped on our conversation. The bodyguard wouldn't take the blame in place of someone else. Either. Arthur trusted his bodyguard, so he turned to walk toward the garden, where Emily was sitting by the swimming pool and chatting with a friend over the phone. Hearing the footsteps behind her, she looked back and hung up the phone before walking up to him happily. Artie, did you tell my grandma about Sophia losing my family heirloom? 
Arthur asked in a calm voice. Emily's face instantly turned crimson. Biting her lower lip, she said, Sorry, Artie, but it's such a big deal that I had to tell. Grandma about it. Arthur's eyes turned frosty in an instant. He warned, there will be no next time. Emily's heart clenched for an instant. Only then did she realize the gravity of the situation. Sorry, Artie. I'm really sorry, but... Sophia Goodwin is the most doggone person for losing such a valuable thing of yours. She's got no idea how valuable the family heirloom is. Don't let me hear you vilify Sophia ever again, or get out of my home, Arthur said before turning around to leave. Emily held onto his arm in panic. Forgive me, Artie. Forgive me, please, okay. Arthur pulled his arm out of her grasp in disgust. Don't touch me. Emily looked at his ruthless figure from behind in disbelief before a surge of resentment swept over her. What has Sophia done? To cause my relationship with Artie to become like this. Sophia gave a loud sneeze in the office. Startled, she mumbled, who's swearing at? Me. Just then, her cell phone rang, and she picked it up. Seeing that it was an incoming call from an unfamiliar number, she answered it, saying, hello. May I ask who this is? Sophia, I'm Emily Jennings. Let's meet up. Emily's voice sounded. Sophia was stunned for a moment. Then, she replied politely, I'm sorry, Miss Jennings, but I'm working. Did you lose the Weiss family's heirloom? Sophia Goodwin, you have no idea how important the heirloom is to Artie. It's been passed down in their family for 200 years, it's even more important than your life. Emily's furious voice sounded on the other. End of the line. Sophia, do you know that the family heirloom is mine? It's what I'm supposed to pass down to Artie and my children. Get it back for me now. Sophia was stunned by Emily's shrill and deafening voice. If you can't find it, then stay away and stop latching onto my Artie. You're not qualified to marry him. He's out of your league. Emily said before hanging up. Sophia inhaled softly. Little did she think she had lost something so valuable that belonged to Arthur. Although she didn't mean it. She was now overwhelmed with a strong sense of self-reproach. Just then, Grace knocked on the door and came in to bring her a cup of coffee. Sophia, the funeral will be held tomorrow. Dress. In black. We'll see old Madame Presgrave off for one last time with President Tillman. Okay. Sophia nodded. Candles were lit in the Presgrave residence's living room, where a photo of Harriet was placed on the altar for the visitors to pay. Their last respects. The candlelight illuminated her smile and her benign features. The arrangements had been made so that she would be escorted to her final resting place tomorrow. Chapter 724 It was early morning, and the sky had just cleared for a while before becoming overcast, immediately after which it began to drizzle. Today was the day Harriet would be laid to rest. At about 9 a.m., everyone who came to see her off on her last journey arrived at the cemetery on time. Anastasia was wearing a black dress with a white flower on her chest. With a dignified and graceful expression, she stood next to Elliot, whereas her two assistants stood one meter behind her. Sophia and Grace were both dressed in black while standing and holding umbrellas. The press graves came one after another. The first ones to arrive were Liam and Kendra, who came with their daughter Lorelai and their son Louis. As the husband and wife spoke a few words to Elliot with profound grief, Lorelai turned her gaze to the latter. With sympathy. Seems like the past few days have been tough on him, she thought. Elliot's expression had a hint of grief and unconcealed weariness to it. Inwardly, Lorelai still loved him. After studying his face for quite a while, she sensed a gaze upon her, which alerted her at once. It was Anastasia, though she looked amicable without warning her too much. Thank you for coming, Lorelai, she said to her. Lorelai nodded before walking toward Liam. Soon after that, another faction in the Presgrave family arrived as well. Coming with their two sons Jacob, their eldest son, and their ten-year-old youngest son Nolan and his wife were followed by his supporters, who were all branch members of the family. Sorry for your loss, Elliot. Thank you, Uncle Nolan. Elliot nodded. Seeing Sophia at a glance with his sharp eyes, Jacob was astounded for a few seconds, he never expected to see the woman he liked at the funeral. Sophia saw him, too, and she gave him a look out of courtesy as their eyes met briefly. Jacob didn't like the funeral at first, but he suddenly found it interesting after seeing that Sophia was present. Little did he think he would meet this pretty and adorable junior again.
The next ones to arrive were Harriet's friends, all four of whom were old and had to sit on wheelchairs and be wheeled here by their families. Elliot and Anastasia voluntarily came up to them and chatted with them. Just then, a black SUV stopped by the side of the road nearby, upon which a man holding a black umbrella stepped out of the vehicle with a bouquet of white flowers in his arms. He looked lean and slender in the drizzling rain. Then, his umbrella was raised slightly, revealing his young and handsome features. It was Arthur. Elliot came up to Arthur and greeted him before the two buddies gave each other a wordless hug. Sophia seemed both surprised and unsurprised to see Arthur here. Jacob felt incredibly restless when he turned his head and saw Arthur. Why is this wise guy everywhere? Lorelai also noticed the young man standing next to Elliot. His aura, which was similar to Elliot's, and his equally handsome appearance caused her to wonder about his identity. I think I met him last time at the wedding, too. Arthur came to Anastasia's side and greeted her, saying, Hi, Anastasia. Anastasia nodded slightly before looking back and saying to Sophia, Sophia, come over here and show young Master Weiss the way. Upon being called, Sophia was startled for a moment. While she was in a fluster, she met Arthur's gaze, he didn't expect her to be here as well. She had no choice but to close her umbrella and come to his side, saying, young Master Weiss, this way, please. Seeing her come over, Arthur naturally moved his umbrella to shelter her from the drizzle, causing his shoulder to be wet by the light rain. As a result, it was hard to tell which of them was the guest of honor here. When Sophia realized this, she said in a whisper, let me hold the umbrella for you. However, Arthur responded with a smile. I'll do it. Sophia had no choice but to stand side by side with him. Just then, Jacob came up to them with an umbrella. It's been a while, Sophia. Hi, Jacob. Sophia said, greeting him. Arthur was very annoyed with Jacob. Suddenly, he stretched out his arm and swept Sophia into his embrace, causing the latter's breathing to quicken slightly. Then, he shot a warning look at Jacob. Chapter 725. Jacob walked away and rejoined his father. However, he decided on a whim that he would steal Sophia from Arthur as he wanted to win against Arthur at least once. A while later, Brenda and her family arrived at the funeral. Among them was Nigel holding Jared in his arms. Jared was wearing a black suit adorned with a white flower for today's occasion. Francis was the one who arrived soon after them. Then, he walked over to offer Elliot some words of condolences before looking for Jared in the crowd. Brenda came and spoke to Elliot. He could see her red eyes set off by her pale look. As they ended their conversation, she walked away and joined the elders. When Nigel came over to greet them, Elliot reminded him, you have to take care of your mother. I tried, but she hasn't had any appetite recently. Dad and I couldn't change her mind. Nigel shook his head in regret. As the tombstone was set in the urn storing Harriet's ashes was buried, it was now time for the deceased's relatives and friends to take turns placing flowers and paying respects at her grave. Elliot, Anastasia, and Jared were the first ones to pay their last respects to Harriet. When Jared placed a bouquet of flowers beside the gravestone, he took a look at Harriet's photo. He had been holding back his tears until Anastasia gave him a gentle pat. At that, he couldn't hold himself back anymore as he threw himself in his mother's arms and wept on her shoulder. Anastasia's red eyes indicated she was also grieving. As she gave him a soothing kiss on his forehead, they stepped aside to make room for other mourners. Others behind them began to stand in a line to place flowers. Among them was Arthur waiting for his turn while holding Sophia's hand in his. When they came to the front, she helped him to place the flowers. Lorelai was staring at Elliot with admiration and longing under the umbrella from time to time. She watched him as he held his wife and son in his arms, then at the tenderness and sadness in his eyes. His state left Lorelai heartbroken as she was feeling sympathetic toward him, even though she wasn't in the position. Once the morning ceremony ended, the guests other than Arthur left one after another. Anastasia stood beside Elliot from the beginning as they saw the guests OLF. Later, she found Elliot lingering in front of Harriet's gravestone, holding his hand in hers. She accompanied him for a few minutes in his silent mourning. Arthur stopped Sophia before all of them left for home and asked her to share a car with him. She rejected, nope, I'm going with President Tillman. However, Anastasia was having a different thought as she suggested gently, Sophia, that's all for today. 
You can go with young Master Weiss. Since he received permission from Anastasia, he grasped Sophia's wrist and dragged her all the way to his car without another word. As Elliot and Anastasia made it back to the villa, Jared had been playing with the Legos in his room as he didn't want to bother his parents who were in dire need of rest now. Anastasia urged Elliot to take a shower before he went to sleep as he had been struggling to sleep properly for the last couple of days. Sometimes, he was interrupted in his sleep by incoming matters, sometimes, he couldn't even fall asleep due to the negative emotions. Listening to her words, he went for a quick shower before she dragged him onto the bed. She settled in his arms and watched him sleep. After a while, she was certain that he had fallen asleep as she could hear his breathing turning slow and deep. She tucked him in bed, then joined Jared and his toys in his room. The deceased was now in peace while the living had to continue with their lives. She was full of determination to take on the oncoming obstacles for her responsibilities. Arthur brought Sophia downtown, but he eventually stopped at a high-end cafe instead of his villa. Sitting opposite him, Sophia maintained the stance she had on their way to the cafe as she tried once again. Young master. Weiss, please let me see your grandma. Let's explain how I lost your family heirloom to her, shall we? She had been worrying about him since Emily's call. Arthur took note of Sophia's worried look. She isn't letting me take the blame. Doesn't it mean she likes me? Sophia, stop worrying about me. Arthur held the cup of coffee up elegantly. I'm not in big trouble at all because grandma is fond of me. Sophia was listening to his explanation while sipping her coffee. As she raised her head casually, she was taken aback by Emily. Walking toward them in feigned elegance with her handbag. Miss Jennings. Sophia placed the coffee cup on the table before she stood to greet Emily. Emily shot daggers at her before turning to Arthur. Artie, Grandma is looking for you everywhere. Let's go home together. Chapter 726. Emily found her way to the cafe as she had asked Arthur's bodyguards for his whereabouts, but she didn't expect to find Sophia. With him, Arthur frowned as he saw her standing before them, while Sophia had already gotten up from her seat. Miss Jennings, you can join young Master Weiss. I shall be going. I'll see you off. Emily faked a smile and wrapped her arm around Sophia as they walked out of the cafe. Sophia was forced to reciprocate the feigned intimacy as she walked beside Emily nervously. Once they went out of the cafe, Emily's expression changed into one of detest as she shoved Sophia forward and warned. Sophia, stop harassing Artie, or else I'll make you pay. The truth was far from what Emily said. Sophia never planned to cling to Arthur, and it was a mere coincidence that Arthur and she met at the funeral. Therefore, she answered calmly, don't worry. I'm not harassing him or anything. Even more, I don't plan to. I'm not going to trust any of your words. Have you ever wondered how influential his family is? Your life is a far cry from his. Emily was staring at Sophia with folded arms, she didn't even bother to hide her disdain. It's only your wishful thinking for him to fall in love with you. Furthermore, don't try your luck. You'll only suffer. Sophia looked into her eyes and replied, first of all, I won't categorize people into particular groups based on their background. Even though you're born with a silver spoon, you need to respect others. You, Emily's words were cut short as she didn't expect a comeback from Sophia. Sophia continued, sorting out the relationship is a matter which needs to be settled between Mr. Weiss and me. You've no right to meddle in our business. Her eyes were icy cold as Emily's superior attitude irritated her. You, Emily tried, but no words came out either. It was just like last time. If you have feelings for young Master Weiss, you're free to pursue him. As for the result, it depends on you. Don't take it out on me. As if she didn't notice Emily's condition, Sophia continued. Emily's cheeks reddened at her words. Is she trying to imply I'll not succeed? She glared at Sophia. If it wasn't for your interference, I would have become his girlfriend sooner. Sophia chuckled. You've always thought lowly of me. If so, there aren't many things I can do to catch his attention, unless he's a fool to fall for me easily. How dare you call Artie a fool? Emily was so enraged she raised her hand, about to slap Sophia. At that moment, Arthur stepped out of the cafe and strode toward them. He had been listening to their conversation for a while, and decided to step forward to prevent any further conflict. As he settled into a stance, he glared at Emily. Emily, stop it. When she saw him showing up, 
the first thought that appeared in Sophia's mind was to look for an escape route. I can't believe. He's right behind us. How long has he been eavesdropping? As she turned on her heels to make an escape for the elevator, Arthur's voice echoed behind her. Stop right there. He was reconsidering his opinion about Sophia. Seeing the other side of her was a surprise to him and he found it amusing as. He walked toward her. You're running away after you called me a fool. Sophia had no choice but to turn around and face him. As she looked into his deep eyes, she explained, I I didn't mean to call. You a fool. You did. Seeing an opportunity, Emily joined in. Miss Jennings, you don't understand. I'm saying that young Master Weiss would be a fool to fall for me. At that, she gloated over her wise comeback and asked for Arthur's opinion. Young Master Weiss, you're not interested in me, right? Of course, I'm not, he answered between gritted teeth. Sophia cast a glance at Emily with a blooming victorious smile on her face. Did you hear him? He doesn't like me. Emily stared at her speechlessly as she had the feeling that it was a perfunctory act. Looking straight into Arthur's eyes, Sophia reminded him, Young Master Weiss, please clarify that there is nothing between us. Or else your pursuer Miss Jennings will misunderstand. Even though the odd feeling still lingered within Emily, she was deprived of the chance to talk back as Sophia stepped into the elevator. She turned to Arthur involuntarily and saw him stare at the shut elevator door with mixed feelings. How rude of her. In the end, Emily could only harum for response. Chapter 727 After Sophia left the cafe, she took a taxi to get home. Enjoying the breezy evening wind swaying her face, she was concurrently searching for an answer in her blank mind. He agreed that he's not interested in me. That's impossible to be a lie, she thought. At that moment, her cell phone notified her of a new message. She checked her phone to read it and found a message from Arthur with only two words. She gaped at the message. Damn, he sent me a message only to scold me. Mr. Weiss. Please remember you're a decent man, she replied to him immediately. Arthur then sent a reply message. You don't have any conscience. You're right, I don't. You've seen through my disguise and shall stop seeing people like me from now on. Sophia had given up on saving her image. He asked again, do you think falling for you is what a fool would do? Meanwhile, Emily was gazing at the scenery outside in the car heading back to the villa. Beside her was Arthur typing messages. On his phone, the corners of his lips turned up from time to time to indicate his good mood, even though his fingers betrayed that. He was terrible at replying to text messages. Artie, when she turned and found him smiling, she asked, who are you chatting with? A friend. His answer was simple. Emily noticed a hint of amusement in Arthur's expression as if he was having fun from the interaction, so she mustered her courage and asked for further information. Who is your friend? You don't know them, he answered as he checked the phone and broke into a wide smile at the message content. Sophia's reply read, I said the wrong thing just now. Please forgive me. Sophia was riding in a taxi, the sunset view could no longer catch her attention as she felt nervous waiting to receive his response. What's wrong with me? Am I having fun now? I'm home. Gotta go. She typed on her phone and sent the message before shoving her cell phone back into her bag. However, her determination only lasted for a while. When she heard a message notification, she looked for her cell phone in the bag and checked the message. It isn't a bad thing to become likable. At least be honored by it. Sophia was taken aback. What does he mean? Does he have feelings for me? Deciding that it was a wise choice to let the topic end here, she replied with a message. I'm home. Arthur stopped sending her any messages, so she paid for the ride and got out of the taxi. As she walked home while staring at her phone, someone halted her. Miss Goodwin, old Madame Weiss would like to see you. Sophia raised her head and found the middle-aged bodyguard from the last time addressing her. She hid her phone behind her involuntarily when she heard Martha was looking for her. Sure. Sophia nodded and followed him into the car. It was when they eventually arrived at a nearby cafe that he let her off. As usual, Martha was waiting for her in a private room. The moment she saw Martha, the guilt washed over her as she had been spending time with Arthur not long ago. Sophia greeted her politely, old Madame Weiss. Take a seat. Martha gestured at the sofa. As she took a seat, Martha asked her without mincing her words. I heard that you lost our family heirloom that Artie gifted to you. Sophia nodded. Yes, I lost it. 
He didn't give it to me, though. I'm the one who snatched it from his neck accidentally and lost it. Later, Arthur didn't give it to you as a gift. Martha asked in surprise. Sophia explained in detail how she had the necklace in the first place, brought the necklace with her to a foreign country, and lost it on a return trip home. Lastly, she apologized, old Madam Weiss, I'm sorry about what happened. Please don't blame Mr. Weiss for it. He's trying to retrieve the necklace too. He took over your father's company to force you to return to the country. That's so him. After hearing her explanation, Martha remarked with mixed emotions. Indeed, Mr. Weiss now has returned my father's company and I'll help him to look for the lost necklace. Sophia revealed everything to Martha with full honesty. Chapter 728. Martha was well experienced and perceptive. She saw through the facade of Arthur asking Sophia's help to look for the necklace and understood his purpose. Truth be told, he was using it as an excuse to keep Sophia at his side. Miss Goodwin, I'll keep an eye on the second-hand market for the necklace. For now, I only need your help for one thing. I need you to leave Artie. She was brisk at handling things as a full plan was formed in her mind and she spoke it immediately. I have an idea. Do as I say. Old Madam Weiss. Sophia gaped at the elder woman dressed in a refined outfit and luxurious pieces of jewelry. What do you want me to do? You'll need to bring a guy you know to see Artie and tell him in person that you love the guy. If Artie's feelings for you don't waver, then the two of you will get engaged. Besides, I'll compensate for your loss because I promised to treat you with care. Martha was hoping Arthur could make a firm decision on his love life as she knew Sophia wasn't the best suitor for him. Sophia stared at the phone on the table with hesitation. Martha's words hurt Sophia badly as if it stung her heart. However, she agreed with Martha's plan eventually. All right, I'll follow your plan. I hope you can put on your best acting because Artie is very observant. Beware not to let him find out anything. I will, Sophia answered with a nod meekly as she lowered her eyes. At that time, she received a message on her phone. She took a quick glance at the message that appeared on the screen. What are you doing right now? The sender stated Arthur's name. That's all for today. I won't blame you for losing our family heirloom. Martha waved in dismissal. It's not your fault at all. You can go now. Sophia picked up the phone from the table and headed toward the exit. Once she went out, the bodyguard who had been waiting offered to send her home, but she rejected it nonetheless. This time, she was walking to get home. Staring at Arthur's messages, she had lost the mood to reply long since the conversation between Martha and her. Taking a deep breath, she then dialed someone's number. The person on the other side of the phone answered with a clear voice. Hey, girl, do you already miss me? Sophia saw no point in beating around the bush. Can I ask you a favor? Sure. What can I help you with? Pretend to be my boyfriend. No problem. I'm the best at doing this kind of thing. Are you having an obstinate pursuer? Don't ask. I'll tell you the details tomorrow. All right. I'll wait for your call. After the call ended, Sophia took and let out another deep breath. The man whom she sought help from earlier was her childhood friend, the son of her father's friend, and one of her good friends. The phone then notified her that a new message had been received. Taking a quick glance at it, she wasn't surprised to see it was from Arthur again. He asked, why aren't you replying? Thinking that he was enjoying their interaction since he found exchanging messages interesting, she didn't bother to reply. When he didn't get her response, he decided to call her instead. Soon, her phone rang. Sophia took a look at the caller ID and pressed the mute button eventually. Sinking back onto the park bench, she watched the phone vibrate with a heavy heart. Finally, the ringtone stopped when she left it unattended. But soon, it rang again. Sophia wasn't expecting him to keep calling her without knowing to take a break. Is he worrying about me? The incoming call stopped sharply just as she was pondering and not answering it. This time, Arthur sent her a message instead. Why are you not answering the phone? What happened to you? Before this, she had never been cruel to anyone she had met. Even a new friend wouldn't receive such cold treatment from her. However, she had promised Martha earlier to keep her distance from Arthur. I'm sorry, Arthur. She was aware that Arthur and she never belonged together. For instance, even though she only stayed in the atelier for a few 
days, she could still recognize from the pictures she had gone through that the jewelry pieces Martha wore were worth more than 10 million per piece. Sophia could never wish for attention from a noble man like him. Not to mention, they were in the early stage as Arthur was only having affection for her so far. The kisses were merely affected by the dopamine and didn't matter his feelings for her. She couldn't reciprocate his feelings if he was looking for a short-term relationship. Finally, Arthur stopped sending her any messages. It seems like he isn't that interested in me, Sophia thought. Chapter 729. Anastasia woke up early in the morning at 8 a.m. in Elliot's villa. However, Elliot was nowhere to be found beside her. Thinking that he had been grieving recently, she got out of bed without a second thought to look for him and eventually found him. In the kitchen, he was wearing a gray shirt today with an apron tied around his waist to make breakfast for his family. Anastasia was moved by the sight. Even though she was still in her pajamas, she walked toward Elliot, who was stirring the porridge in the pot, and embraced him from behind. For a moment, neither of them spoke. Even though there was silence hanging between them, he could feel her unspoken love. He intertwined his fingers with hers as he said, Go wake Jared up, it's breakfast time soon. Okay, I'll go wake him up, Anastasia answered, but she was reluctant to move from her spot. She wanted to enjoy the warmth of his back a little longer. Elliot turned around and pressed a kiss on her hair. Just when he moved down for her lips, she avoided him. I haven't brushed my teeth. I don't mind. At that, he tried to close their distance. Anastasia ran out of the kitchen with a giggle and headed upstairs. After she had woken up Jared, she cleaned up herself and returned downstairs. As she showed up once again in the kitchen, she wrapped her arms around Elliot and tiptoed to give him a kiss precisely on the lips. He put an arm around her waist as he reciprocated her kiss. At that moment, the determination to protect his family was built within him. Even though he was still grieving for Harriet deep down, he wouldn't hesitate to show his love for the people around him. After a hearty breakfast, the three went to a horse ranch nearby. Jared had a pony that belonged to him there. He was practicing alone on the ranch while his parents were watching him from the cafe. They had a great time bonding with each other. Meanwhile, in the Presgrave Hospital, a chief physician had fallen into distress as if his life was at stake after he received a call. Climbing to the rooftop, he took out a cigarette and smoked it. At that moment, his phone rang and he answered, Hello. Have you decided? The old madam has just passed away. I don't think it's a wise decision to do it now. I want to see the result before 3 p.m. Or else, you'll lose your freedom and stay in jail for years. Don't. Fine, I'll do it. Good. I'll be waiting. The man on the other side ended the call once he finished his words. The chief physician lit another cigarette with shaking hands as he finished the previous one. Then, he took a deep inhale and wiped away the sweat glued to his forehead. Someone had threatened him with a video featuring him and a married woman. The content of the video was enough of an evidence for adultery to imprison him. At that moment, two nurses walked onto the rooftop. They greeted him when they saw him. Mr. Campbell, are you okay? Don't worry about me. Once again, he wiped the sweat away and put the cigarette out before he left the rooftop. On the other hand, Sophia took a day off from Bourgeois this morning. She got into her childhood friend's car at around 10 o'clock a.m. and headed to Arthur's villa. She planned to seize the opportunity to pack up her things in Arthur's guest room. Thus, she prayed for him to be at home right now. Then, she sent him a message on the road to confirm his whereabouts. Mr. Weiss, are you home? Arthur soon replied, I am. Seeing she was close to the destination, Sophia didn't bother to reply to him as she turned to the side and reminded, James. You'll do as I say later, all right. No problem. Leave it to me. James Lennon smiled confidently. I'll definitely break his heart for your sake. At that, he brushed his hair to make the best look. He was all groomed up today for a handsome look. She only nodded. However, as he drove the car toward the residential area, he began to panic. Is that guy wealthy? Chapter 730. He's very wealthy. Is he as handsome as me? Sophia turned to him and consoled, he's not as good looking as you. All right. James chuckled at her while feeling that his confidence was boosted. Or else, I'd have nothing to compete against a wealthy and more handsome guy. At that moment, she received a message from Arthur. Why didn't you answer my calls or reply to my messages last night? 
She typed a reply and sent it. I muted my phone and fell asleep. I'm sorry. Are you coming over to my house? Yes, I'm coming over to pack my things. I'll be there soon, she replied. At the same time, Arthur took a break from his work in the study room and checked on his messages. As he read Sophia's reply, he knitted his brows and wondered, is she not living here anymore? Thinking that Sophia would arrive soon, he walked out of the study room and headed downstairs. Five minutes later, the doorbell rang, so Arthur pressed a button to allow the visitor access. He saw that Sophia pushed the door to enter with a young man behind her. The moment James landed his eyes on the man standing in the garden, he became dejected as his confidence had quickly dissipated. How dare Sophia lie to me? Everyone can see the guy over there is the best among all. Not only is he handsome, but he even has a strong aura, good taste in picking outfits, a stunning look, a toned body, and an elegant temperament. That man has completely surpassed me in every aspect. Sophia cleared her throat as she held his hand and led him toward Arthur nervously. Good morning, Mr. Weiss. I'm here to pack my things. She avoided looking into Arthur's eyes as she introduced James, this is my boyfriend, James. He's here to help me with the packing. Arthur squinted his eyes and asked coldly, your boyfriend. Nice to meet you. I'm James. Sophia and I are childhood sweethearts. James reached out for a handshake. However, Arthur only gave him a perfunctory glance before turning to Sophia immediately. You never told me you're seeing someone. Sophia laughed at the remark. You never asked. Anyway, I'm going to pack my things. At that, she held James's arm intimately as she said, let's go, dear. I need your help. James reciprocated her act as both of them walked into the villa and made their way upstairs. Arthur was the only one at home now as Emily accompanied Martha on a trip, so Sophia seized the convenient timing to pack her things. She was aware that their absence set her in comfort. In the guest room, Sophia took out the suitcase and began packing her clothes. Beside her, James whispered, Sophia, are you sure you aren't going to date a handsome man like him? Sophia shushed him to stop talking. Bored, James pulled open a drawer in her closet randomly and was stunned when he found her lingerie. Sophia, come pack these by yourself. She was embarrassed by the situation. At this moment, she heard steady footsteps outside the room it belonged to none other than Arthur. At that moment, an idea flashed across her mind and she raised her voice. James, help me to store the lingerie in the suitcase. James stared at her in disbelief as he pointed at himself to confirm her thought. Seeing Sophia nod without hesitation and gesturing at the door, he understood her intention immediately. When he bowed to put her lingeries into the suitcase, he stumbled on a corner of it, resulting in him pushing Sophia onto the bed. Involuntarily, Sophia shrieked at the sudden event. Seeing that they were in close proximity, she shot him a glare at his clumsiness. When she was about to push James away, she noticed someone pushing the door open. She wrapped her arms around James's neck even though he didn't plan to maintain the position any longer. However, he was forced to lean forward and ended up pressing a kiss onto her forehead anyway. At that exact moment, Arthur pushed the door open and found the two of them about to kiss on the bed. He narrowed his eyes at the sight and asked in an unamused voice, what are you doing? Chapter 731 I'm kissing my girlfriend. James quickly slid into his role. This is not a crime, is it? Sophia feigned shyness as she said, we're not kissing here. Wait until we're home. He grinned. All right, all right. I'll listen to you for now. I've prepared a candlelight dinner for tonight, so we can enjoy a romantic night later. She could only blush coquettishly at his words. Even though she wouldn't even dare look at Arthur's face, she could feel his eyes glued on her. Arthur saw everything when James went straight for Sophia's lingerie in the closet and kept them in the suitcase. At last, Sophia zipped her suitcase and lifted it from the ground. She passed her luggage to James, who naturally took it from her. Then, she walked toward Arthur, who was waiting at the door and mustered the courage to look into his eyes which seemed to have a deep meaning beneath. Mr. Weiss, I've decided to live with my boyfriend. Thank you for your hospitality. Arthur grabbed her wrist without giving her the opportunity to resist. Come with me for a sec. Hey, Mr. Weiss, let go of me. However, he didn't spare her any time to struggle out of his grip as he led her toward his study room. You, let go of my girlfriend. 
James shouted from behind, but Sophia was already being pulled into the study room by Arthur. And the door shut with a loud thud. Sophia could only feel Arthur being oppressive before he pinned her against the door. His fresh scent enveloped her as he leaned forward to question her with a cold tone. You dare to flirt with me when you're already dating someone. Raising her head, she saw his stony face and ice-cold eyes. She insisted, I'm sorry, B, but I never flirted with you. Never, you didn't stop me when I kissed you in the hotel that day. Can't you remember? If that was the case, Arthur would help. Sophia to recall that day's events. Her cheeks flushed as she nudged him. Don't do this. My boyfriend's not far away. Arthur pressed her harder on the door. Does he know we kissed? Does he know you melted in my embrace like a good girl that day? Sophia was short of breath at their proximity. Her face was turning crimson. What does he want? I'll be frank to him. We only kissed, after all. He'll forgive me. She turned her head away from him. When did you find yourself a boyfriend? Arthur was confused as he had initiated an investigation on her. The man who showed up today was not in the findings. He returned to the country last week. He's really my boyfriend, Sophia explained promptly to make him believe her. You've been sleeping with each other. His eyes turned cold when he asked as if he was ripping off his disguise and revealing his cruel inner self. His expression was a heart-wrenching view for her. However, she had no choice but to lie to him. Shutting her eyes, and in the most solemn tone she could manage, she said, we had done everything we should as a couple two years ago. Her statement was even solid with a precise time. Nobody would ever have any more doubt about their relationship. Arthur was dumbfounded by her calm statement. Sophia could sense his disdain as he took a step back, indicating that she succeeded in her plan. Martha once told her that he would never be close to someone who gained his hatred ever again. I'm sorry, she apologized quickly before she walked out of the study room. Downstairs in the living room, James was admiring the art pieces here. Seeing Sophia coming down, he asked in concern, are you okay? I'm fine. Let's go. All Sophia wanted to do was run away from here because Arthur's look was causing her heart to ache. Just then, James saw Arthur walking down the stairs. He immediately returned to his role as he held Sophia close and warned. The other man, please stay away from my girlfriend from now on. I want you to keep your distance from her. Sophia's eyes widened at him as she only hoped to leave right now. However, Arthur sneered. Say, did she ever tell you that she and I shared a room before? And did she tell you that we kissed? When she was wearing only a bathrobe. Chapter 732. Lames turned to look at Sophia in disbelief. He could not believe that she and Arthur had done such a thing. Left with no choice, she played along. I'm sorry, James. Please forgive me. He quickly took hold of her hand. It's all right. I know that I've made you feel left out when I was abroad, but I promise that I'll stay by your side from now on. I forgive you. Arthur's brows furrowed tightly after he failed to infuriate the man. Mr. Weiss, stop it. You can't separate us. We love each other and we're going to get engaged next month, she added solemnly. Since they had taken things this far, she gladly used the opportunity to get under Arthur's skin. Are you serious? No man would ever be unwavered like you when his woman has been intimate with someone else. Arthur. Rebuked James. I, if you ever lay a finger on my girlfriend again, I won't let you off the hook that easily, warned James angrily. Try me, Arthur retorted while walking toward Sophia with a sinister smile, his evil intentions, engulfed by his handsome face. Had not seemed to be noticed by her. I, I will. James could discern the chest muscles underneath Arthur's shirt. He seemed strong and it was obvious that James stood no chance against him. At that moment, the man wrapped his muscular arm around Sophia's waist and propped her chin before crushing his lips onto hers aggressively. It was a blatant showcase of affection and dominance in front of James. Her beady eyes widened as she felt his lips on hers, but she could not shake off his arm from her waist. Hum, she whimpered as she thought she was going mad for she had not expected Arthur to cross the line with such an innocent facade. A wide-eyed James witnessed the scene in utter shock. He did not foresee the man to kiss her forcefully right before his eyes. Let go of her. He huffed in rage. As her close friend, he could not bear the sight of her getting violated. Even so, Arthur kissed her as though it was a punishment for her. Sophia's mind went blank and her body tensed up while she attempted to shove him away. 
When he finally released her, he provoked James. Wanna fight with me? Meanwhile, her breathing became heavier as she covered her rosy lips. Despite her flushing face, she tried to gather herself. Before tugging at James. Let's go. A cold voice resounded menacingly behind them. Sophia Goodwin, you better break up with him in an hour. Yet, she neither turned her head nor responded to his threat as she believed that he had gone overboard this time. After getting into the car, James gazed at her in concern. Are you all right? Sophia covered her face and spoke in a quivering voice, I'm fine. That guy is handsome, but he's a pervert. How dare he force himself on you like that? Please don't bring it up anymore, and keep it a secret, will you? Begged Sophia. Of course, I won't, but it looks like he really likes you, James claimed while starting up the car. The sudden kiss she shared with Arthur kept plaguing her mind while the repeated imagery of his eyelashes and gaze reminded her that it was her punishment. The more she thought about it, the redder her cheeks became. Lorelai made a dash to the hotel nearby the airport to take a rest since she had a flight to catch at 10 p.m. Now that she had stolen Elliot's sperm, she had to be extra careful in order not to give the game away. Chapter 733. Anastasia was dealing with her work in the villa. After signing the document, a strong sense of uneasiness crept into her heart. If Elliot's possession in the hospital remained unfound, there would be nightmares awaiting her. It was no joking matter either seeing that she had a perturbing dream previously that felt almost too realistic. If her son was to have another two half-siblings out of the blue, it was undeniable that the impact inflated on him would be big as they were too additional lives to deal with. Just who on earth will do such a thing? It's not a coincidence for sure. Someone must be scheming it for a long time. Elliot was waiting for the results from the initial investigation at the police station. It was 3 p.m. when he entered the meeting. Room in which Roy Barlow, the leader of the investigation team, poured him a cup of coffee before starting to lay out the analysis of the suspects. Mr. Presgrave, this is a really important case for us. It has become more serious in light of your status and wealth. Elliot stared at the list of suspects displayed on the screen, which had included their social network as well. We believe that it's not something done out of impulsivity. The thief is very well informed of your family in Presgrave Hospital. We've even come to a conclusion where pregnancy is the suspect's objectives. The suspect wants to bear your child to be one of the future heirs. Roy gave a detailed breakdown. These six people are the suspects for Nyo. They belong to the upper echelons in the hospital who have considerable authority to set the plan into motion with ease. Is there anyone that appears suspicious to you, Mr. Presgrave? Elliot shook his head lightly. I rarely take part in the management of the hospital, so I don't know much about them. His job was only to check the hospital's income from the annual reports. As of the management, the current director was in charge of it. Based on the information we have, their network is kinda complicated and there's nothing off about their bank statement. Since their annual income is high, they don't have any problem with money. Of course, we're still digging into other aspects. Elliot looked at the screen as Roy swiped the pictures one by one. Suddenly, something caught his attention. Please zoom in. Into the third picture. Almost immediately, Roy did as he was told. From the corner of the screen, one could see a suspicious figure walking across the corridor. The person took a few peeks of the surroundings before leaving. He's Sean Ilrod, the director. His network is quite large. Do you know him, Mr. Presgrave? He's the assistant director's cousin. I've seen him a few times during meetings. Please show me every footage and picture you have of him, requested Elliot as he thought of something. The other officers took actions and sifted through the pictures and footage to pick out everything that had caught Sean in it. Roy took a sip of coffee while looking at the screen before he turned to Elliot in surprise at the very second. He wondered if Elliot had served in the military before. Otherwise, how could he sense that something was off about Sean at first glance when there were so many other suspects? At that moment, Sean's actions became questionable in the footage. While he was calling for help to put out the fire, he was evacuating at the same time. He was not genuinely concerned about the fire. In fact, it was all just a show. Chapter 734. Mr. Presgrave, you have a great sense of observation. This guy is behaving strangely, said one of the officers. Elliot had spent his days in the army since he was nine till he was 16, which explained his keen observation. After seven 
Years of dominating the business world, he also developed the ability to identify a person's true nature. Roy, we've reviewed his contact history, and he made a call to someone named, Liam Presgrave, while he was in the car. The sparkle in Elliot's eyes turned as cold as a blade. Liam, is Sean working for him? Look into Liam Presgrave, Roy ordered his men as he turned toward Elliot. Do you know who this man is, Mr. Presgrave? Elliot clenched his hands into a fist on the table as he comprehended what had happened. He nodded. I know him. He's one of the elder members of the Presgrave family. Two months ago, he offered me an international collaboration, but I declined. We must arrest Sean Ilrod as soon as possible, Roy ordered his men. Elliot said, Roy, I'll give you a list of names. I would appreciate it if you restricted them from leaving the country. Roy nodded as he said, got it. Please send it to me as soon as possible. Elliot called Ray over to make a list of names immediately. Each and every single name on the list was connected to the press graves. As soon as he left the police station, he got into his car, took out his phone, and called Anastasia. Hey, how's everything going? Any clues? She asked anxiously. The investigation has yielded some new information. Liam likely has something to do with it. Liam, Lorelei's father. She was astonished. Do not worry about it. We'll get to the bottom of it. Elliot tried to soothe her. Since the incident, he found it distressing to see her. Suffering from constant nightmares. Is it Lorelei? If her father stole your sperm, does that mean he wants her to get pregnant with your baby? Anastasia was so mad that she almost lost her mind. Anastasia, calm down. I won't let that happen, Elliot reassured her. Arrest her at all costs. We must not allow her to get away from this. Anastasia clenched her teeth. She had completely underrated Lorelai. I will be home in one hour. Wait for me. He wanted to go home but had to stay and cooperate with the police in their investigation. Finally, a sigh of relief lifted her spirits. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. The officers, amid an investigation in the hospital, received a call and headed to Sean's office. Sean happened to be on his way to the bathroom, so he was not in the office. However, he was able to overhear the conversation that was taking place between his assistant and the officer as soon as he turned the corner at the end of the corridor. Mr. Ilrod is not at his office. When will he come back? I'm not sure. Please notify us as soon as he returns, the officer said sternly. Sean panicked and scurried out to the restroom to avoid further attention. Never in his wildest imagination did he think the Police would approach him. Do they suspect me? With shaking hands, he reached for his phone to call Liam. Hello. I'm done for, Liam. It looks like the police are suspecting me. How's the situation over there? Is it successful? When was that? Just now, the police officers came to my office. Don't worry. I'm not going to say anything. Sean hung up the phone, deciding that he should leave the hospital. Chapter 735. Apparently, he had planned on taking the 10 p.m. flight, but now he knew he had to reschedule it or miss his chance to escape. For good, he called his daughter and insisted that she make the necessary arrangements. When Lorelai got the call, she was anxious because she had not anticipated that they would find out about it so soon. Right now, all she wanted to do was escape the country as quickly as possible. Her assistant purchased the earliest flight ticket and accompanied her on board. When the police called the airports, management department, Lorelai had already left the country. The information was immediately transmitted to the police. Roy informed Elliot, we're one step too late, Mr. Presgrave. We will contact Interpol immediately and request their aid, but we cannot promise that we will be able to stop her. Please give me her flight information, Elliot requested. Mr. Presgrave. Roy was hesitating. You can proceed with the customary procedure, responded Elliot. Lorelai needed to be deported back to the country so that she could face punishment. Even if the authorities were powerless to stop her, he had to take action. How else could he calm down his wife? He would never jeopardize her or put her in danger in any manner. Meanwhile, Anastasia, who was in the villa, was surprised by Lorelai's actions. Still, it was within her expectation, considering how ambitious Liam was to get himself involved in the board of directors of Presgrave Group. It was his endeavor to pave the way to wealth for future generations. Thus, he had been scheming it after old Madame Presgrave's death. Needless to say, it was the easiest way to be rich, albeit malicious and spiteful.
Anastasia finally knew why Harriet kept reminding her to see through the ones who held the authority in the Presgrave family. It seemed like the old madam herself had thwarted their evil multiple times. These rats had been coveting the wealth raked in by the Presgrave group, hence the burden and responsibilities weighing on Anastasia's shoulders. She had to keep a tight rein on them, or the younger generations of the family would suffer too. Time flew by, and there was Elliot's car returning to the villa. To get to the bottom of the case, he did not get a night of good sleep these two days because Anastasia could not sleep well. Despite his red-rimmed eyes, which became more visible under the illuminating lights, she could see the determination in those eyes. Seeing him in such a state pained her heart, and she instantly threw herself into his arms. Sweetheart, I'm going to leave the country later. I'll be back, so stay with our son and wait for me. Elliot's plan was to ruin Lorelei's scheme with his own hands to dispose of any possible threat. Anastasia sighed in his embrace as she knew what he was going to do. I never expected them to stoop to this level. How can they do this to us? I won't let them succeed, he said sternly. At that moment, his phone rang, and she let him go so he could take the call. Hello. Mr. Presgrave, we have tracked down the bottle that Liam took. The doctor who operated on Lorelei has also been detained. And we will begin interrogation as soon as possible. Okay, thanks. Roy, I'll be counting on you. Leave it to us. We'll look into everything and uncover the truth. Elliot put down the phone and pulled Anastasia over to sit on the sofa. He said, the police have already found it. Now, I'm going to find Lorelai and watch her with my own eyes until the surgery is over. Chapter 736. Be careful. Anastasia nestled in Elliot's arms as her heart ached for him. Not only was he suffering from the pain of losing his loved one after Harriet's funeral, he was also stabbed in the back by his relatives. I will, he assured her, and he vowed he would never again cause worry for his family. On the other hand, Liam, who was in his office, was confident that Elliot would be looking for his daughter to force her into undergoing the operation. Since he had come this far, he would see his plan through to the end and not let it fail as it was their only chance for survival. The child's arrival would make Elliot's life miserable because the child would one day be eligible for an inheritance from him. Otherwise, there will be an inheritance dispute between his children in the future. Given Elliot's level of great intelligence, it was almost inevitable that his future generations would also be bright. As a result, there was no good reason for Liam to pass up the golden opportunity to change his family's future. In fact, he had used up every penny he had to make sure his daughter could escape from Elliot's grasp. Thanks to the fortune amassed in recent years, he had accumulated many resources and gathered several subordinates. Following Lorelei's departure, Liam enlisted the help of eight of his dependable subordinates to protect her. Furthermore, he found out that Elliot was heading to Hogland, which was why Lorelai was able to leave the country first. Simply put, it was a race against time. Following everything that had transpired, Liam was pleased to see the police arriving. He remained composed even while the handcuffs were being slapped on his wrists. On the other hand, his wife was so anxious that she passed out and his son was in. A state of shock. In the evening, a private plane took off from the airport, and the flight to Hogland would take almost eight hours. Meanwhile, Anastasia was preparing dinner for her son at home. He was so used to her cooking that she never bothered to seek the assistance of the maids when preparing dinner. She lost focus while slicing carrots and accidentally cut her finger. Looking at her bleeding finger, she hissed in pain as panic surged in her. It was not due to the wound, but the cut that gave her a bad feeling. About the whole situation, she cleaned the wound with water to stop the bleeding, which eventually stopped since it was not a deep cut. Still, she earnestly prayed for Elliot's safe return. Tonight, guests are not allowed in the bar, and only one person drinks here. As the bar's owner, Arthur can act in any way he pleases. He was passing the time by drinking alcohol as the words of his grandma kept playing through his thoughts. That they would return home the following morning. Arthur dialed a number after downing two glasses. He waited patiently even though the receiver did not answer the phone. Immediately, finally, as the call was about to end, a woman's voice could be heard on the other line. Hello. Why are you taking so long to pick up the phone? Is it because of me? Do you not want to talk with me? He moaned. No, I was in the shower. What's the matter? Sophia inquired. I'll be leaving tomorrow. 
Could you just come over? I'd like to see you. Ha, huh, you're leaving. Hum, it's the earliest flight in the morning. Then, I think it's best we don't meet up. I hope you'll have a safe flight. Arthur was disappointed because she had no intention of asking him to stay. She even wished him a safe flight. Chapter 737. Sophia, if I go back, then you might not get to see me again in this lifetime. Would you not have any regrets at all? Arthur spoke. In a low, raspy voice. Then, Sophia, sitting on the bed, inhaled deeply upon hearing the man's voice on the phone. I have no regrets. I'm sure you'll soon forget about me once you return. In fact, we are from very different social backgrounds. Goodbye. Sophia abruptly hung up the phone when she finished speaking. She wrapped her arms around her knees and sat in bed, lost in her thoughts. Martha's words were loud and clear in her mind, and it felt like a curse, leave my grandson. You shouldn't try to handle someone you can't control. You have your own life to live, and he has his own, so just leave him forever. Do whatever it takes to make him stop thinking about you, even if it means hurting him. As soon as she ended the call on him in the bar, Arthur grabbed his car keys and got up. He got into his car and turned the ignition to drive in only one direction. At that moment, an SUV pulled up in front of the bar and began following closely behind him. Emily was inside the SUV and had planned to meet him at the bar, but she arrived just in time to watch him drive off, and she told her bodyguard to follow him. It's late, so where is he going? He does not appear to return to the villa based on this route. Tomorrow, they were scheduled to return home, and Emily had been looking forward to finally leaving this place and returning to where they belonged. Sophia would no longer exist in Arthur's heart, and Emily would have a better chance of capturing his heart. The mysterious-looking and dominant SUV moved like a wild horse, and the car trailing behind the SUV struggled to keep up with the speed of the vehicle ahead. Emily, seated in the backseat, grew increasingly curious about his destination. Speed up so that you can keep up with him. Do not lose sight of him. The speed at which Arthur drove seemed to indicate that he was going to meet someone important, so she was determined to find out who it was. Half an hour later, he finally slowed down his car because he had driven into a residential area with villas. He finally stopped by the villa's gates, next to the sidewalk. A black SUV that had been following behind finally caught up to him. Emily was rather daring, as evidenced by the fact that she instructed her bodyguard to park the car around five meters behind Arthur's vehicle. At that very time, Arthur proceeded to call Sophia's number again. She picked up the phone immediately this time, Hello. I'm here. Come downstairs to see me. The sound of his slightly authoritative voice could be heard. The third-floor French window had its curtains drawn back in an instant. Under the lights, a silhouette of a slender figure stood in front of the window. When Sophia caught a glimpse of the familiar SUV parked below, she was taken aback. Did he actually come over? Just go. I don't want to see you. Sophia did her best to hold back her emotions and had no desire to see him. If you don't come down, I'll come to you. Arthur was not someone who could be easily gotten rid of. No, don't come inside my house. My parents are going to kick you out for sure. Are you sure about that? I'd like to be kicked out at least once. Arthur hung up the phone immediately after saying that. He knew she was watching him from upstairs, so he opened the door to the car and got out. Upstairs, Sophia began to panic. What a stubborn man he is. Then, her figure quickly disappeared from the French window on the third floor. Chapter 738 Sophia raced down the stairs and as soon as she rushed into the living room, she startled Emma, who was watching TV. Where are you off to? Mom, I need to grab my parcel from the hub. It's an urgent parcel, Sophia lied. After she had said that, she pushed open the door and left. She ran out of the house hastily and arrived at the gates. As soon as she yanked the gates open, she saw the man standing under the street lights. He had a smug smile on his face as he looked at her. He behaved as if he had already expected her to be rushing out of the door to come and see him. You. Sophia glared at him in anger. Accompany me for a walk. Arthur reached out to tug her hand. She refused to move but she was forcefully pulled to the side of his car door by his strength and she panicked at that point. Then, she struggled to get away. I don't want to go. You should leave. However, 
He refused to release her hand and the two of them just stood there holding hands while she made several attempts to get away from him. Arthur, let go of my hand. Sophia, just be honest with me. Do you really have no feelings for me? Arthur interrogated her. Although he had done a lot of nasty things, he had treated her quite well. Sophia took the chance to extricate her hand as she turned in the other direction. I don't. I don't fancy men like you at all. Then, what kind of men do you prefer? Arthur cast aside his usual high and mighty attitude as he persistently asked her. I don't need to tell you that. She reckoned that he seemed slightly different tonight and there was a whiff of alcohol in the air. And she frowned. Did you drink? Yes. Arthur admitted to her. However, subsequently, Sophia chided him angrily. How dare you drink and drive? Arthur, don't you know that it's illegal to drink and drive? He was significantly speechless. If something bad happens, say if you hit a passerby or get into a traffic accident, then you would be doomed. She suddenly lost her temper and she was angry that he did such an irresponsible thing. I didn't drink much. I just had a glass, Arthur explained. That is unacceptable too. From now on, you must not drive if you've taken even just a sip of alcohol, all right. At that moment, Sophia behaved like a strict wife lecturing her husband. He seemed to be in good spirits suddenly as he revealed a smile and agreed in no time. Sure, I promise not to drink and drive. From now on and I won't drive if I plan to drink. Their interaction was clearly audible to the girl sitting five meters away with her car window wound down and it was brought to her ears by the night breeze because of the quietness of the surroundings. Emily couldn't believe her ears at all as she heard their conversation. Seriously, did these words come out of the mouth of the high and mighty young Master Weiss? I want to head back inside. You should leave. After Sophia said that, she turned around and was about to walk off. However, Arthur clutched her wrist. Keep me company for another moment. Sophia didn't mind keeping him company so they stood by the entrance and basked under the warm light of the street lamp. Above their head. At that moment, they looked at each other quietly. Suddenly, there was a car coming in their direction from afar and she acutely realized that it was her father's car. She panicked. And pulled Arthur away. It's my dad's car. Find somewhere to hide. Arthur noticed her frantic look and he quickly pulled her aside to hide on the other side of the SUV. Over this side, they had their backs against the road so they were masked beneath the large SUV and it was quite a safe spot. However, as she came back to her senses, she realized that she had her back pressed against the car door with him in front of her. Instantly, her face flushed red. Chapter 739. Seeing Drake's car enter the garage, Arthur looked down only to see a pair of pure, bright eyes staring back at him. Often, a pure and innocent girl would be the hardest to resist. Sophia's beauty, which made her look shy at this moment, could literally take a man's breath away. Arthur felt his stone-cold heart actually pounding for her. For some reason, there was an inexplicable charm to this woman as she could command his attention without even doing a single thing. Even though the vibe was somewhat awkward, there was also a hint of romance in the air. Smiling, he admired the woman in his embrace, seemingly happy just to tease her like this. Let go of me, Sophia said softly. Nope, unless you kiss me. No, I'm not going to. She turned her face to another direction, not intending to let him have his way. With a piercing gaze, Arthur's eyes were locked on her face while smiling simultaneously. He looked very stern yet very alluring. At the same time, this made Sophia feel helpless. When did he become so whiny? Doesn't he always like to act all cold and distant? Looking at her for a while, Arthur suddenly had a glint in his eyes before he held her face and kissed her on the lips. She could not react in time as she felt a slight cooling sensation on her lips while her thoughts were all jumbled up. Yet, she did not push him away because she felt a strong sense of endorphins rushing through her whole body. On the other hand, Emily, who was sitting in the rear passenger seat of the car beside them, saw the scene and was livid, for she had never seen Arthur act so intimately with any woman before. She only thought that he did not approach women because he was not interested. Yet, it turned out that he had such a childish and gentle side of him when dealing with a woman he liked. While having a gentle expression, he even kissed the woman in front of him so passionately. Is he still the same Arthur I know? Is he still the extraordinary young Master Weiss? Why is he acting like this towards some unknown girl? At that moment, Emily wanted to get out of the car. However, 
she knew that it would be useless as she would only draw more of Arthur's ire toward herself anyway. Yet, the scene that was playing out in front of her made her feel like she was in hell. Closing her eyes, she uttered, let's leave. The bodyguard started the car immediately, which shocked Sophia, who pushed Arthur away while blushing hard. Oh my god, there's someone in the car beside us. This is so embarrassing. Arthur shot a cold glance at the bodyguard. Is this person tired of living? Then, the bodyguard quickly drove off, fearful that Arthur might find out who he was. It was at that time that Sophia's phone rang. Picking it up, she saw that it was her mother calling. I should really go back now. Sophia was afraid that her parents might be worried since she said that she only came out to receive a package. Arthur gazed at her with a hesitant look, but his eyes turned into a determinant one soon. What time is your flight tomorrow? Sophia was curious. Ten in the morning. Looking down all of a sudden, Sophia tried to hide her reluctant expression. I wish you a safe flight then. Actually, you only need to say, don't go, and I can consider not going back for now. Arthur focused his gaze on her. Chapter 740. Sophia looked up in shock. Really, will he stay if I want him to? Yet, despite the strong urge of expressing this thought to him, she could not say it out loud as Martha's words were like a curse. Haunting her. I, I have something to do tomorrow, so I might not be able to send you off. Otherwise, I would try to be there. I'm serious, said Sophia with a pout. Arthur sighed. It seemed like he was being delusional. It's fine. You don't have to come since you don't want to see me anyway. I'll go back to my country and inherit the family. Business. After that, I'll find someone suitable to marry and form a family with her. Now that I think about it, it actually seems quite nice. He acted like he had already planned out his future. Yet, Sophia suddenly felt a bit uncomfortable as she pushed him. Right, you're not young anymore. It's time for you to build a career and a family. Then, she turned around and quickly walked to the direction of her home before wiping her face. This action made the man chase after her. Then, he gripped her wrist, pulled her in and embraced her just as she was about to reach the entrance. This made Sophia fall onto his body. Looking up, she had a face full of tears, making her seem especially pitiful. Right then, Arthur was feeling a bit perplexed by his own words. Why would I say that to anger her? Somewhat upset, Sophia pushed him. Just leave if you want to. Why are you still holding on to me? Without saying a single word, Arthur hugged her. Sophia, who was full of tears by this point, buried her face in his chest out of embarrassment and sadness. Why are you crying? Are you that reluctant to see me leave? Arthur teased her. It was then Sophia heard the side door being opened and she remembered that her father had the habit of going out on walks. In the heat of the moment, she pulled the man to a corner of the villa. Quickly come here. My dad's coming out now. Although Arthur did not know why they had to hide like this, he still followed her instructions and went to the corner. The moment he hid himself, he hugged her tightly. This made Sophia blush again. Daddy just came out and here I am, hugging with some man. We'll be dead if he catches us. Yet, Drake went on his usual route as she only looked up after her father had disappeared from their view. All right, you should go now. If I don't go back home now, my mom's definitely going to get all anxious, Sophia stated sternly. Hearing this, Arthur let go of her and asked, are you really not going to persuade me to stay back? Sophia was feeling bitter at his question. It was not that she did not want him to stay back, it was that she did not have the right to do so. Yet, she could only keep this to herself. Goodbye, I won't be seeing you off. Sophia then turned around and entered her home after entering the door pin number. Standing in the courtyard, she did not go to the main hall straight away. Instead, she went to a window and cried upon seeing the man drive off. Why does it hurt so bad? We didn't say that we like each other nor have we confessed before. On top of that, we're not even lovers, so what is this pain in my chest? On the plane, Lorelai, who was flying long distance just after a surgery, felt lethargic. She had found the perfect seat on the plane. Even though, she believed that Elliot would look for her, she hoped that it would be in five years' time. By that time, she promised herself that she would come back with two children who resembled him. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. For more videos.